right. Uh, we're going to be talking about deductive reasoning. So deductive reasoning is taking knowledge and accepted facts to draw logical conclusions. Basically, it's like a domino effect. You have the, the thing that comes first, and then everything that comes after it. And they all fall because of the logic that connects them. So, for instance, if A causes B and B causes C, then the domino effect creates what's called a syllogism, um, which is A causes C. Or the last one, right? Yeah, if you have a chain. And a, a real complex syllogism can have 20 terms. It would end up being A causes T. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. In general, I'm just showing you the format. But think about this. If A causes B, and B causes C, and C causes D, and D causes E, and E causes F, our syllogism would be A causes, A causes F. Is that clear? Okay. It's pretty simple. Okay, so an if-then statement. If-then statement is the format that we rely upon to analyze. Um, when we start out, we are going to be using uh, literally words, if-then statements. Like, if it continues to rain, then people will get sick. But eventually, we turn it into things that look like this. This would be written, read as, if A, then B. The arrow is like your then. Is that clear to everybody? Yeah. Okay. Um, and it, it can be that one thing is true or false, and another is therefore true or false. Um, they, they have, there's multiple ways to set it up. Okay, so a hypothesis. A hypothesis is the idea that follows the if in an if-then statement. In this example, the hypothesis is A, and it's the thing that causes something else to happen. The conclusion is the idea that follows then in the if-then statement. So in this example, again, the conclusion is B. So this would be read as if A, then B. In other words, A causes B to happen. So it's time to learn the two main laws that we do in, uh, in geometric logic. Uh, this is read as if A, then B, A, therefore B. You'll, you'll get this idea pretty quickly, I believe. It's sort of like if I eat ice cream, I will uh, be happy. Yay! Okay, so I eat ice cream there for I'll be happy. I'll be happy. I'm happy. Okay, the law of detachment is very simple. It basically takes takes the two things that are in the if then statement and separates them. Okay, it's sort of the backwards of the syllogism. So what's our A here? I eat ice cream. It's not if. Don't use it. I eat ice cream. ice cream is our A. What's our B? We'll be happy. I will be happy. So, what am I restating right here? I eat ice cream. I eat ice cream. So that's a. our A, right? Mm -hmm. So, the way it works, the conclusion that you draw in the law of detachment is A is restated, so therefore our job is to restate B. B. So, therefore, I'm happy. I am happy. And it's good to change the case like that, that's, that's proper. So I am happy fits perfectly in the law of detachment. Does everybody feel okay about the law of detachment? Yeah. Very simple, the law of detachment. Okay, the law of syllogism is a little bit more sophisticated, but shouldn't be that bad. No red, red, red. Okay, so law of syllogism is if A then B, if B then C, so if A then C. Um, if... I get a pet turtle, then, um... You'll have to buy food. <laughs> okay. I'll have to buy it, it food. If I have to buy it Food, you can't buy Modern Warfare 3. Then I won't have food for myself. Won't, because turtles eat a lot, right? Yeah. Have food for 
myself. Okay, so this is a pretty easy one to pick apart because all the if thens are in place. So what's what's our a here? I get a pet turtle. I get a pet turtle is our a. So in this statement, that is our hypothesis or our conclusion? Hypothesis. Hypothesis. What is our conclusion here? Um, I have to buy a food. I'll have to buy it. Food is our conclusion. That's also our B in the if A then B. Okay, are we getting B or A here? B. 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 So what's our B? I have to buy it food. And what's our what's the next one? I won't have food for myself. Okay, is that A, B, or something? C. Else? C, okay. Cool. So back to the format. A causes B, B causes C. Therefore, or so, A causes C, so what will we write? If I buy a pet turtle, then I won't have food for myself. Don't you have to give an explanation why then later on? Like, if you tell somebody? Uh, of course, in the real world, of course, you have to make sense. You guys could probably imagine the syllogism that starts like, if I go to the grocery store and ends up with my cousin will die of pneumonia, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it's like, it's just a process, that's all, you know? It, it, there doesn't have to be a logical process. What you really have to recognize is that because we're given one fact, we're allowed to conclude everything that logically falls underneath that fact, no matter how many degrees of separation. Does that make sense? Okay, thank you for asking. Yeah. So it's like one of those really, really like complicated mouse traps that Tom makes in, in Tom and Jerry, like that all it starts with is with him pulling the cheese. Oh like, yeah. Stuff and right. Then, and then all of a sudden something falls on Jerry. Great, yeah. It's a giant mouse trap. That's exactly right. It's even even better than the domino metaphor. You start with the ball rolling. Have you ever been to the Tech Museum and seen that thing that just goes on forever? Yeah. Right. That is a giant law of syllogism. Who hasn't? Uh, laid out for you. So that's perfect. All right, cool. I like that a lot, and it's an idea for a project. Cool. Okay, cut it.